Yes, we are still at Good World uh, Festival of Speed and we are still in a uh, Grenadier off-road car. Uh, Grenadier has given us a very well sturdy built off-road car and they have here at Goodwood also given us a pickup truck. And now we are uh, in the next generation of off-road cars, a hydrogen powered Grenadier. Can you, you yeah, first give me your name and what you are doing at Grenadier? I'm Pamela, I'm the Chief Engineer and Project Manager of this uh, fuel cell Grenadier demonstrator car and hopefully soon the serial development of it. Um, yeah, that's what we did. We, we started one and a half year ago and um, had one target, no compromise, no emission in a Grenadier. Um, uh, is it sort of a center question for Grenadier, no compromise? Yes, I mean, in the end, that's what this car is, is meant to be. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a non-compromised off-roader. It's a non-compromised car. I think you can feel and see that also in the internal combustion engine uh, car. It's a really hard, solid off-roader that makes a lot of fun to drive off-road. And it's robust, durable, and uh, that's what you expect and need of an off-road vehicle. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's the si size and the, the look of a traditional Land Rover Defender, yes. so it fills the gap, I guess. Yeah, I think I think I mean having a this classic kind of off-roading off-road car, that's what a lot of people are, were missing, and yeah. that was the gap. So um, I think that is a the the real good uh, fit for this niche. And honestly, driving off-road with this vehicle, not only with a fuel cell, but yeah. especially uh, at the moment with an internal combustion engine, makes real fun. It's yeah. really cool. Uh, and as I heard you in your presentation here, uh, it's just something you call gecko mode. You've got motors in the hubs, wheel hubs, or can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, if you have an e-motor on each wheel, you can really have, you can sense how much grip you have on each wheel and then give talk to each wheel that you where you can where you can have a traction otherwise you just spin your wheel that doesn't make sense so you can really crawl up the hill with this gecko we call it gecko mode yeah, yeah. that's a kind of uh, engineering stuff but um yeah that's what that's that's our personal thing and um that's really 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 cool and it's it's um especially with this linear acceleration and torque that's given by an electric drive um it i, I always say it's a kind of beginner off-road vehicle <laughs> because it's so easy to drive off-road it really makes fun it really makes sense to have it and uh, i mean for sure in, in the internal combustion engine you can also drive off-road but it's i think it needs a little bit more training to do that. So, so with this car you are giving us hope of uh, even better off-roading. Uh, I mean, if you think back like five or six years, we maybe thought we never can go off-roading in a serious off-road uh, when it comes to electric cars, but now we are there. And you intend to start building this one? Yes, I mean, that's what we're all hoping. In the, in the end, it's a, we, we could do that. We, we, um, with this car, I think we demonstrated that off-road driving with an electric car is really easy, it's really cool, it really makes sense and it, I mean, in the end I'm an engineer, we want to do things always better and better, yeah for sure we want to be better in off-road, better in on-road, better in everything. If, that's, if, that's... if you ask an engineer, this is impossible, they will prove it's possible. Yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah. sure, no, but really. It's um, this car, having this car for driving, it was really, really nice, really, really good. Um, and uh, we hope that infrastructure picks up and, and gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. Because in the end, even if you're really outdoor enthusiast and want to drive off-road, if you can't refill your car, then you have this uh, happy moment <laughs> for some kilometers or for, for maybe some hundred kilometers, but then that's it. Yeah. Um, so nobody will pay, uh, pay the, the, the price. So we are still hoping for better infrastructure. Absolutely. And I mean, it's, it's a kind of easy to implement that infra infrastructure. Yes, it will cost some money, but uh, compared to, uh, for example, we are providing now infrastructure for battery electric vehicles. That's much more expensive. Um, 
hydrogen is quite easy to implement into in, into the infrastructure and for example we can have infrastructure also in completely remote places because you can have a kind of um, yeah, remote hydrogen station somewhere um, if you think about everywhere where a windmill or solar panels are you can have next to it electrolyzer produce your hydrogen store it and then have your nozzle and refill your car yeah. great yeah thank you very much thank you.